decided that, you know, uh, the doctor, Danny Sims told me that the doctor said, you know, listen, he's not going to live anyway. You know, he's, he has only three weeks. So, you know, just let the tour keep going until he, he dropped down. And Danny said, no, you can't do that. That is inhuman, you know. So the Pittsburgh show was really like the last show. When they came down, Rita and the girls, and when everybody down, they suspect something. But Bob is always early, you know. Everything in the when the man tore him is the first one on the bus at the venue, he was the first one there. So when they see him come down there, they realized something was wrong, you know. And then when they went down and um Desi is in right hand that stay with him cooking food and everything and so on, and then tell Desi watch him, you know, and tell Skill watch him because boy, he feel like he may go down and thing, you know. And he did that last show, they said he did a, a sound check with one song that lasted over an hour. He says, Lord, I'm going to keep on. I can't remember the exact song, you know, and everybody could feel that something was wrong. Then it was really him. And after the show, it's funny, you know, after the show finished, they canceled the tour. He stayed in New York and he was staying at Danny Sims' house. And then at night, he was down by Ken Williams' club. I was down there with him. I see him dance three and a half hours straight one night. You know, him does that special night for him at the club. And Ken Williams bringing the Miss Jamaica New York girls to brighten up the place. And the place was nice, it said fruits and everything. And Bob start, Bob dance, spoons, merengue, calypso, scare everything. As one girl tired him, they took up another one. And I said to them, so I've never seen scare dance so. And he was dancing, dancing. I remember when he came in Ken Williams' office, I sat with him and I said, Scar, how do you feel like what the doctor said? You only have three weeks to live. He said, boy, I'm rolling a cone, me call it, pin slipped them big, and he was rolling a cone, you know. He said, boy, I didn't even worry about that, you know. I just enjoy life to the fullest. And during that time, before he left for Germany, he went to boxing down at Madison Square Garden. He went to see a play, your arms too short to box with God. You know, he went to play on Broadway. He was like, he was just enjoying himself. And when he finished doing the round, he ended up at Club Negro, and there till we hours before him go home. And then... After that, the whole thing start. I remember he lived till the following year, May. Yeah. You know, so he lived past three weeks. Is there anything that you haven't done that you want to do before you retire? Um, honestly, there's many things I wanted to do, and some of them are still gonna do it. You know, I've never gotten into the area of production, producing music, play, or something like that. But I have the ability. I know, or I know what it takes to do that. You know. And um, that is one of my desire. I right now I have an offer from a major um, company in the in the states. It's an affiliate of CBS about a documentary. When they hear my stories, a documentary, you know, they want to do about my journey in the business because there's so much thing that you don't hear quite of, of them yet. And these are actual incidents that I was privileged to be present and witness, and a lot of them I'm, I'm part of, you know. So it's it's like a, a, I couldn't stop. As far as me concerned, this word retirement is not in my um, category. You know, I don't know that word. I hear it is not for me, because right now I I feel like I can go another 20, 30 years at the level that I'm going. So you know, I for my book rather, I'm putting together a package. We're going to do a book tour. Just go out and sign in book. No, 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 no. Right? I'm going to produce a, a, a presentation package called. Um, reggae my life is tour in a tribute to my great friend Robbie Shakespeare because we shared a lot of great moments with Sly and Robbie over the years so I'm planning to, to put back the revolutionaries band together you know with Hansa Collins, Sly, Lloyd Parks and them and then go to a book tour named reggae my life is right with performances by special artists through that era you know in different countries and the feedback I am getting from it around the world is excellent you know and um I, I, I feel good about it because um, these are things that I wanted to, to, to accomplish. Because remember, you know, I took the first and only African sun splash tour to Africa, you know, right? 130 people from here I took to Africa. Bernie Spear, Judy Mott, Chalice, Sly and Robbie, Yellow Man. And we had two African groups, King Sonia Day and Fela Kuti, right? Tour in Africa under the banner of Reggae Sun Splash. It was an event supposed to be um, run by Synergy. But two weeks before the show, Synergy dropped out because of some differences between Tony Johnson and them. 
And then everybody come to me and say, you're the most important person to take over this thing. I said, but I'm a one man, so it is a big organization, you know. And then I called Ronnie Burke. I said, Ronnie, what happened to why Tony requested certain things before he leave? And they didn't want to do it, so he dropped out. So they, they said, I'm the, the best person. I hesitated a lot because the days of going to Africa, you need a lot of things to get done, you know. And um, as Minister Green said at Robbie funeral, after that tour, Robbie came back and trimmed off in dread. Just one final thing, um, Copeland, this idea of a reggae mode. Do you think it will help to to preserve and to deal with some of the problems that you identified? Yes, you know I'm I'm happy when they started doing it, and I made a point of duty. Any part of the world I'm at, I'm at, I always come down for that to be a part of it. It's great that we can recognize um, our artists. It gives me an opportunity to speak on platform like this because I do a lot of PowerPoint presentation around the world, you know. And I enjoy doing that. I, as a matter of fact, I'm doing that more so now than the managing artists for that. I give advice and things. But doing the PowerPoint presentation, I find it, and I found it very good and very good because people learn a lot about the music and the country. So I will do sometimes a 60 minute one hour and I do it in, in Australia, in Thailand, you know, and people turn out because what hurt me a lot is when we have these conferences and seminars in Jamaica, the artists them don't come to it, you know. Is most of the time is the lay people them pull up the place. And this is where you have to come to learn because the topics that you learn from, you know, so you as an artist can understand the business more because most of them don't understand that it's 80% business and 20% entertainment, you know, so you need to learn that part. So during reggae month, there are opportunities that they can learn from things like what me and you do in here now and hear some of the stories so that the, the wrongs can be, be right they, when they come into the picture they do have to follow the same route that some of the art the mistakes that some of the artists made um, over the years because a lot of them make a lot of mistakes but they, they couldn't help it because you know they did have the knowledge and the education we are one of the greatest thing in reggae music because when you have a, a music career everybody wants to sing like you look like you dance like you walk like you talk like you we have something special Jamaica is a very special country, you know, and we must nurture it and just let it grow, you know, and cut down from the present situation with violence and things is concerned because we can make it a better place, you know. And Jamaica is my own. I don't care if I have 10 different passports in 10 different countries. This is where it's at. This is where I grew. This is where I was born. And it's always been my blood. And thanks to your Jamaican people who supported me over the years in every aspect and respect. Copeland Forms, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. And I hope I can do more like this because I'm a good talker, you know. I can sometimes. <laughs> we see that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you. You're welcome, sir.